Today, we're talking about another brand new product that has me really, really excited if it works the way I hope it does from Anchor Work, the M650 wireless microphones. And if this kind of thing looks familiar to you, it might be because I've done similar videos to similar products before. I did the Rode Wireless Go 2 and I did the DJI mic. Now, this little box has a ton of goodies in it, so let's dig in. In the box, you have the charging case, which contains the receiver and both transmitters, as well as a lightning adapter and USB-C adapter. You also have a USB-C cable, an auxiliary cable, Placeable covers for your transmitters, two windscreens for your transmitters, got your instructions, and a nice little travel case to haul it all around. So if we look at the travel case, it's actually a really beautiful one. And if you look at the front, you'll see the four little dots there. That's the lights indicating the charge. So just like if you own ear pods or anything else, all you have to do is charge the case and the case charges everything that's inside it. Inside, when you open it up, you'll see the two transmitters as well as the receiver. You'll see they all kind of turn on when you open up the case. And in there, you also have your lightning and USB-C adapter. So everything you need is in this one little case. It's so one thing I'd actually like to see on these cases, rather than have an extra carrying case to put all your wind socks and all that other stuff in make this part a little bit bigger or make this part openable here so you can store everything there and then close it up and then open and get everything here i think that that would be brilliant so let's dig in and actually take out the receiver first it's very simple and if you're familiar with either the dji mic or the rode wireless go 2 you'll recognize it immediately you can see the levels for the two different transmitters here all the other stats on top and you can see over each transmitter the battery life and the actual signal because this thing has enormous range the transmitters can be up to 656 feet away from the receiver that's huge to get into all the different settings for the receiver if you swipe down these are your receiver settings so you'll see noise reduction so you can actually set your noise reduction to low high or off you can select your soundtrack which will give you mono channels or left right channel and while i didn't say outright i'm guessing that if you choose left right when you have both of them it'll mux the two transmitters together whereas if you select mono you're going to get a single channel of each of you and then you can mix it any which way you want you have a safe mode and if you're not familiar with what a safe mode is for audio recording basically what it's going to do it's going to take your left and right audio channels one channel is going to have your transmitter at the currently set gain and the other channel is actually going to be backed off just a little bit so that way if you're too loud in your one channel you'll actually still have one that's still usable and then you have an auxiliary option here so when it says aux low this is when you're actually sending audio to your camera so it doesn't overload your camera's audio then if you tap it you'll see aux high and it's for headphones so that's if you're actually using it to monitor the audio that's coming into it if you swipe up on the screen initially so you're going to see a sync setting here and what the sync setting is going to do is actually going to send the same command to both transmitters at the same time either to mute or to record and then if you swipe left or right you're going to get the controls for each individual transmitter so if you swipe to the right you're going to get transmitter one and if you swipe to the left you're going to get transmitter two and this has the individual controls for those so you can individually mute them set them to record or actually adjust the gain you can also get a quick glance of the storage on the individual transmitters and see how much is actually recorded on there and how many files on the bottom you'll see a clip and it's the same size clip that'll allow you to slip this onto a camera shoe but it is worth noting that you can only slide this on the shoe with the screen facing backwards so if you have a videographer or something they'll be able to see the levels but if you're vlogging you won't be able to see them unless of course you get some kind of shoe adapter and you're able to turn it around i mean it is theoretically possible just not the way it is here on the right you have a single button and this has all kinds of functionality it actually help you pair with your transmitters it'll lock the screen for you or you can physically turn it off just by holding it down for a couple of seconds on the left you'll see a usb-c port and an auxiliary out and then on the very back in addition to the contacts where you actually charge the device you're going to see the spot where you stick the adapter so what you do is you stick the adapter sideways into that hole with the adapter part facing off to the right covering up the contacts then turn it clockwise and it'll click into place now it looks like this and from there you can plug it into your phone and it'll automatically become the usb microphone for your phone just obviously make sure you're using the right adapter for the right phone usb-c for your androids and the lightning for iphones now let's take a look at the individual transmitters so on the front where it says anchor work there's no kind of functionality there you can't press in it's not a button or anything like that but it is decorative you can replace these with the alternate covers that actually came in the box so at the very top you actually see the microphone itself and then you see a port off to the side and that is actually a jack for a lavalier mic but when you actually look at what's written next to it it also says windscreen so let's have a look at what that does i'm sorry but of the three wireless microphones i've used this is the best design for the windsock all you have to do is actually take this and you'll see a plug on the windsock that looks exactly like an auxiliary jack all you have to do is plug that in directly and then bam you have that in one second rather than those teeny tiny little wind sucks that you have to screw on and around the microphone this is completely covering up the microphone and it looks like a teeny tiny don king now only in america in canada and japan china 
England, the world. On the left of the transmitter, you're gonna see a single button there. It should be lighting up blue. That's indicating to you that it's on. If you press it in once simply, it will mute the microphone. From here, you can also hold it down different durations to both turn off and unpair the microphone from the transmitter. And then on the back, you're gonna see it's handy dandy clip. It can also fit onto a cold shoe. Now the way it's configured would mean that the microphone would actually be pointing backwards, except for the fact that this one's magnetic. You can literally take it off flip it around, put it down, and then it would slip onto the shoe facing the right way. I kind of wish they would have done the same for the transmitter. It just makes sense considering you can do it for this one. But there's a lot more functionality to this magnetic clip. And the main one that it's actually for is for a shirt like this. And I know what you're saying, Joe, it's a dope shirt. All your shirts are dope, but it doesn't have a proper lapel or a spot to clip in your mic nicely. So it would sit properly like a lavalier. Agreed. That's what this is for. I'm gonna give you a show here. That is a strong, strong magnet. And I can even drag it around to adjust it to exactly where I want afterwards. And there you go. And this is the nice thing about this one. It looks decorative compared to the other ones. You know, the Rode Wireless Go 2 is a big square. The DJI mic is a little bit more discreet than the Rode Wireless Go 2, but it's still a microphone. It's very clear. This one could be anything. My only gripe and i get it to like don't get me wrong it's the thing that says anchor work it's again it's the branding it's the showing off the branding and stuff like that i'd love to see anchor work team up with some people and get some decorative covers that you could actually purchase separately or something like that because you know these can go on somebody's lapel or on their shirt pocket and you can actually make it look like a fashionable decoration right now it just looks like i got a promotional button for anchor work that happens to light up a little bit on the side but if you want to be satisfied i am here to satisfy you let's hear the power of this magnet Love it. So another really cool feature of this wireless mic kit is actually the software that it hooks up to. It really kind of helps it stand apart from the other ones. Let's take a look at it. So this is the AnchorWorks software. It works for a ton of different devices for AnchorWork. I'm not going to reserve judgment on how it does for all those different ones, but just playing with this for as long as I have. This one works fantastic. I mean, Razer Synapse, maybe take a note. But this software connection to the M650 wireless microphone is literally brand new. It came out today as I'm recording this. And you can see really clearly over here. So you have your device settings, you have your three devices. So we're looking at the receiver right now, and then we have the two transmitters. And when you clicked on one, all of its settings show up here. And obviously it shows you giant here that that's what you selected in case you don't know. Up here, you can get your firmware information. So you can get all your serial numbers. You can look for updates and all that kind of thing. And you get your user manual, which currently doesn't exist yet to show you how new this product actually is. The user manual hasn't been finished yet, but this is where you'll be able to get it. Now going down the side, so you have your noise reduction modes. So you have off, you have low, and you have high. We're going to take a listen to all those settings. So we can hear for ourselves what's going to work best. Then you can turn on your safe mode, your sound mode from stereo to mono, all that stuff you could actually set on the transmitter itself. Now let's get into some of the stuff you can't. The equalizer settings. This thing has its own EQ that it will apply directly to the device. So if I just mess around with these here, that theoretically looks good. And you can find a low pass filter here. You'll often see it as a high pass filter because all of the higher frequencies are being let through, but that's neither here nor there. I usually like in a room like this, I like to select 150 Hertz and that's gonna get rid of any of that low frequency hum in a room. Now down here, just some basic settings for the device itself. So your backlight duration is just how long it stays lit up before it actually goes to black. You can bring it back just by touching the screen or hitting the button, anything like that. The device language, you know, select the device's language. And then it's got your device time, which you can actually just click here to synchronize with your computer and your firmware version for this individual device. Now, if you go to the transmitters, obviously they're both gonna be the same. It's got your mute on and off. You can set your gain here automatically. That is something you can also do directly on the receiver. We have some settings for storage so you can overwrite older files when your storage fills up. You might wanna consider doing this if you're really bad at getting the old files off of the device, but it's super easy because whenever you plug this case in, each individual transmitter shows up as an external hard drive here. So you can just click on it, pick what files you want and then just copy them, move them to your computer, delete them, whatever you want to do. And the last thing you can do is just customize what the button on the transmitter actually does. Right now it's defaulted to be mute, but you can make it to mark the file. So what you would do there is when you're recording and something good happens, you can actually hit the button. It would put a flag on the actual file so you'd know where to look to find that actual good moment. Or if you're like me and most of the people I work with, we're very fidgety. We accidentally hit things all the time. So you might set it to none so you don't accidentally mute yourself when you're out on the field. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually 
actually test the microphone in all the different possible scenarios we can. So I wanna test it hooked up to the computer, to a camera, and to your phone. So our first stop is right here at the setup. We're hooked directly into the computer right now. The receiver's plugged into the PC and I'm hooked up to the receiver from here. The setup was super easy. We're hooked up in OBS right now. It found the source immediately. It just comes up as Anchorwork M650RX. And that's what we're listening to right now. So currently we're sitting at minus 60 B on the gain and the noise reduction is set to high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start to back it off now. We're gonna take the noise reduction. We're gonna set it to low. So now here's the noise reduction at low and I'm not seeing any audio bouncing in the bars yet or anything like that. So I think the noise reduction is still working pretty well. So now let's turn the noise reduction off altogether and see what that's like. Okay, so now I see the noise reduction. I can see the bars bouncing on here when it's silent. So I am definitely getting some noise. I'm not seeing anything in OBS. So we'll see how well that's picking up. I actually had to look and see if I had any noise reduction filters or anything like that, just to make absolutely sure I was giving you clean sound. And I am indeed giving you clean sound. Okay, so now we're hooked up on a lavalier mic. I had to crumple up Mario's face a little bit to do that, but it's 8-bit Mario, so he can handle it. Ran into a little snag, not because of the device, but because of my lavalier. My lavalier has a TRRS connection, so if you'll notice, that's actually got the three black lines on it, but the transmitter is actually a TRS input, so that's only the two black lines. Now, thankfully, I had an adapter floating around somewhere. I managed to find it. Now, here we are. We are up and running and working. Okay, so now we're on low noise reduction here with the lav mic. Hopefully, it's still sounding good. We're going to go back, and I'm going to look at all this stuff in a little bit, and we'll give you my final findings. Okay, that was the first time I've seen the audio bouncing at all during any of this on the OBS itself. So that's indicating that I'm definitely getting some noise and we'll just see how much. All right, next device. Okay, so we're now actually set up on my camera. This is the Sony ZV-E10. This is my vlogging camera and my just kind of remote moving around camera. That's my main camera, but we are hooked up directly with just the transmitter only right now. And uh, hopefully it's sounding good. We have the noise reduction set to high right now. We're gonna change that in just a second. Okay, now we're on a low noise reduction. So hopefully we're still good. Hopefully we're in good shape. Now I really wanted to try this area just because it's very unforgiving for audio. That's why I use a lot of dynamic mics and every mic I've ever tested gets tested kind of against these harsher conditions to see how well they hold up. And now we're putting it completely to the test because now it is all the way off and so you're probably picking up a lot more noise than you were picking up before. Hopefully we still sound good. Hopefully it's still usable too, because it doesn't necessarily have to ruin the audio just because there's some room noise. A little music can cover it up if it's not too bad. Okay, now we are on the trusty lavalier microphone and hopefully it's not too big of a sound difference between the two. What my expectation would be is a little bit less room noise for this one because it's a little bit closer to me, whereas we have an omnidirectional microphone in the actual transmitter. That way I would expect to pick up a little bit more noise, but we'll see all of that as we go. Okay, so now the noise reduction is low and it's my expectation that there's going to be a little bit of processing that you're going to hear in your voice as this noise reduction is coming on. So it's my hope that I can use as little as possible and it's my hope that that low pass filter when the noise reduction is all the way off is going to be enough that I don't need to use it at all. Therefore you getting just clean Joe voice as we go. And this is it with the noise reduction off and if you can hear me through all the noise that may or may not be there I don't know yet. Why don't you go and subscribe to me on my gaming channel Miscast Play. I do a lot of streaming stuff there. You can come say hello. We can talk about gear and stuff like that while I'm gaming, but it's just a fun place to be. Okay, so now I'm recording from my phone, once again, hooked up just via the transmitter itself. And I gotta say, the thing I love about these kits, and that's not just this one, but the Rode Wireless Go 2, the DJI mic, is just the portability of the whole thing. It all comes in a tiny little thing, except the Rode, which doesn't come in a nice little case. It's in a bag, all loose pieces and stuff like that. They really need to fix that for the next one, but I digress. But what I mean is anybody who wants to become a content creator can just easily become a content creator for just a few hundred dollars. You can just have your phone. I mean, the phone quality is really, really good. And then all you have to do is plug a microphone like this into it and the sky's the limit. So all of this has been on with the noise reduction set to off. So let's actually turn it to low now. So now I'm seeing much less bounce in the levels. So it's probably cleaned up just a little bit, which is great news. Now I want to set it to high. And I really love how quick that is. That just took me a couple of seconds to change my settings. And I'm really thrilled with the overall ease of use of this thing. And now we're back and we've got the lav on instead of the transmitter and we're going to test the audio on this and hear how it sounds. Again, we're still near the computer, so there's actually a fan going. It's actually a computer that I'm reviewing, so it's not my normal computer. This is actually a much quieter computer than mine. But you have other things. The fridge is over there and just kind of the general ambient noise going on in the room. You know, a lot of that stuff can pick up, but right now we're on high noise reduction, so I'm hoping that you're not picking up anything. 
Now we're on low noise reduction, so hopefully still good. We're gonna find out. Again, I'm gonna pick all of these apart really well when I'm done making the footage. Okay, so now it's off. We're gonna hear how this one sounds. Probably gonna get a little bit more bounce here. I can't actually see right now. Let's go in here. Yeah, according to this, we're getting quite a lot more noise. So that's to be expected. We'll see how it sounds overall. And we'll also see how the noise reduction actually affects my voice. Is it gonna do too much processing in my voice and make it sound all digitized? Let's go find out right now. So color me impressed. I mean, I really like the sound of the microphone. I would say to avoid the high setting on the noise reduction just because it was a really overprocessed version of my voice. It's the kind of thing where if you were doing it in post, you added a noise reduction filter and you really jacked up the settings. That's kind of how it sounded to me. But if you're in a situation where it's just way too much noise going on, it could be wind, it could be whatever, using that filter would be better than having all of the noise kind of ruin your audio. I would recommend using the low when you can because it just gets rid of that little bit of noise that might be happening around and it sounds pretty good overall with your voice. But what I highly recommend is if you have the opportunity to do it test the different settings on your voice because if you can have it off have it off my voice was way more natural in that setting and i actually found on every single device it wasn't so bad i mean there was noise you could hear it but again like i said if you have some music or something like that playing underneath it you're not really going to notice it anyways i had music playing underneath that entire test and i did that on purpose i want you to let me know down in the comments if you even noticed any noise during any of the test settings so now i guess it's time to lay down the final verdict and that verdict on this channel is and just a judgment of the device itself. It's really a comparison against its two biggest competitors, the Rode Wireless Go 2, the DJI mic. So where does it stand? As far as mic quality is concerned, I'm a little torn between that and the Rode Wireless Go 2. The Rode Wireless Go 2 made my voice sound a little bit better, but it wasn't as good with the noise. It actually was a much noisier microphone than this one was. And a part of that are all the settings that you can set on this thing. But where it beats the Rode Wireless Go 2 is all of the things that it has that the DJI mic has as well, which is the case the organization, the ability to charge everything in one spot. And if someone takes my idea to take the case and also turn it into storage for all your accessories and stuff like that, then you're even another step higher. And comparing it to the DJI mic, I'd say that the audio quality was probably there about the same. Again, might be a little bit more noise on the DJI mic, but the software is a big winner for the anchor work because you can set EQ, you can set all your settings as far as recording and storage and all these different things. And that's something that the DJI mic doesn't have at all, at least last that I love. And then if we want to talk about price, this is actually the cheapest of the three at $249.99 US. And then you have the Rode Wireless Go 2 at $299.99 US and the DJI mic at $329 US. Now, the one thing that DJI and Rode have that Anchor Work doesn't have right now, it might in the future, is that it actually has a version that only has a single transmitter with the receiver. Because let's face it, not everybody's going to need it. And it's quite a savings if you drop down to the one transmitter version. But honestly, from design quality, audio quality, aesthetic, functionality, software, the whole deal, I think that this is a definite buy. I'm not going to lie to you, I was not holding out a ton of hope for this. It just wasn't something that was really on my radar. And as it came across my desk, I was kind of like, oh, let's give it a shot. And I'm absolutely thrilled with it. And I hope you guys are too. So like I said, during my test, there is going to be an affiliate link down below. So you can go and check that out. And just as a reminder for all my videos, I usually have an affiliate link down there. So if any of the things that I've reviewed, you're interested in buying, if you use my links, they will help the channel. I get a small commission on or something like that, but everything goes back into the channel. We're trying to continue to build and I'm trying to expand. We've got Miscast Play like I talked about. I have my podcast, Miscast Commentary. We're building an empire here, people. You know, my friend came up with the nickname, the Media King of the North, so I'm trying to live up to it. But let me know what you guys think of the Anchor Work M650 wireless microphone down below in the comments. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe while you're down there. And while I've got you, might as well try and keep you. Got a couple of videos here, so you might as well check out the competition. So we've got the DJI mic and the Rode Wire let's go to right here for you. You can check either of those out. And as always, dear friends, let's get to work.